Some atomizers are truly made different and very few make them unique as GG. Hey folks, Korax here. How many of you know about a singer called Falco? He was an Austrian singer and songwriter and by God, he was different. He has sold 20 million albums and 40 million singles which makes him the best selling Austrian singer of all time. But Falco also had several international hits. So let's pay tribute to Johann's Hans Holtz. Screen name Falco. Greeks Amadeus. So what is it? It is a sweet combination of RDA and RTA. And hear me out, it is different. Let's take a closer look. hard cardboard box which is film wrapped. This is the tank kit, a separate buy but I feel is a must buy. There are 6 variants of this system, 3 each in RDA and RTA modes. Mm, there is also a titanium version. Mine is the matte finished one. Oh yes, there is an instructions pamphlet. Whether everyone reads it or not, I think some sort of a user manual must be included in every package. Immensely helps a newbie. This one comes in 6 languages. Nice branding, <laughs> but that typo. I always like boxes which has placement cutouts. Inside you have the Addy, MTL body sleeve, a heat safety drip tip and 4 airflow inserts. Of course there is a spares baggie included as well with the usual contents. Importantly the non skonking pin. Inclusion of the four airflow inserts as a basic package is appreciated. MTL insert for single coil builds. One side is blocked while the other has a 1.4 mm air hole which will be under the coil. Single coil direct lung insert. One side is blocked while the other has a 3 by 7 mm air slot totally open under the coil. All bottom air holes blocked strictly for dripper mode with airflow from top via the body sleeve. For dual coil, bottom air fed mode. Both these air holes are 1 mm each. This is my preferred airflow insert and it can be used in both dripper and tank modes. Once again, note that these two inserts have different size air holes. Duals are 1 mm each while the single one has a 1.4 mm air hole. The Ultim drip tip. This one is different in style than that's already on the Addy. This one has a heat protector base plate. The single air slot body sleeve. 
with a 2.5 by 8 mm linear air slot. Nice smooth edges. And quite a sturdy piece of steel. And the main deal. The Amadeus RDA. Oh my god, isn't she beautiful? Golden Greeks Amadeus Neatly CNC cut stripes all around. Assists in grabbing while dismantling. Heat dissipation indentations on the body as well. And stylishly done at that. Beautifully done vector graphics. CNC cut. The base plate has airway slits on both sides. These are 1.5 by 15 mm linear slits. Through and through and non-adjustable. The air slots, both sides of the body, are 2.5 by 8 mm each and of course they are adjustable. The top cap rotates to regulate the air slots to whatever selection you prefer. From zero to fully open and anything in between. The same is with the single air hole body. Same size slot, but just one. Bottom has your serial number and some TPD standard marking. And what is this? AM1 aka Amadeus 1. So there would be a version 2 sometimes later, eh? This is the BF pin. And the pause pins are slightly protruding, plus adjustable. I'll demonstrate how a little later. The drip tip is not a regular style. These are sleeve tips, like Grim Green's Recoil RDA. Externally sits over the mouthpiece. Same is the Altem one. But its base plate guards our lips against heat to be typically used while building super sub ohm setups. And if you also grab the tank kit, which you must you get three drip tips to play with. This top cap is threaded and comes with a spit bracket protection disc inside. Again a solid piece of steel this is. No compromise anywhere with this ID. Nothing to skimp. Which is how high end IDs are supposed to be, isn't it? Super fine. High quality thread work here and absolutely neat and clean. GG ships everything ultrasonic cleaned, can be used straight out of the box. Now let's take a closer look inside. Pretty tough to open for the first time. Three o-ring system here 
and damn good set of o-rings eh the base has cutouts to match the body's twin flanges this is how they marry up not to spin while attaching and removing from the mod velocity style deck with four post holes there are two different sizes of post screws in the system 3.5 by 2.5 mm ones for thick wires and 4 by 2.5 mm for thinner wires one set is in the spares baggy along with the necessary flat head screw driver <laughs> love that lifted air channels this is where the airflow inserts will sit they go in from underneath externally replaceable without disturbing the coil and wick oh this base section also acts as a catch cup to withhold condensations if any it is wise to inspect it and clean it from time to time This is the adjustable post pin. And there are two in the package. One for squonking while the other for regular mode. And this is the way the airflow inserts work. Our coils will sit over the inserts. Now, what is this wizardry? Didn't I tell you this is different? Well, with Amadeus, you can also adjust the distance between the posts, widen or narrow it depending on the size, length of your coil. Fancy coils, most welcome here. And don't worry the posts will never hit the deck walls and short out These two PEK stoppers ensure that And of course everything can be totally dismantled as well if you so choose to Generally you won't have to PEK ring here isolating the post post PEK plate inside separating the positive and the negative posts as well. And here is the bottom juice inlet for squonking. It has four holes in the sides for juice to come into the deck well. Not a through and through affair. So, for one, juice gets straight away directed towards the wick tails when squirted. For two, when you drip, it doesn't straight away follow into the 510. Now let's put them back together. Arrange the positive post, insulator and the post pin first. Then slide in the negative post. Here is an important function. Note this notch on the base plate and the matching groove cut inside the deck ring. These two marry up to lock the post's assembly in place so that it doesn't freely rotate. Now plug in an airflow insert. and reattach the 510 base back an o-ring isolates the post pin inside the 510 housing Beep. 
Time to modify your airflow. There are four inserts to select from as you know. Bottom air fed dual coils. Bottom air fed single coil. Bottom air channels closed both sides or one side. Just unscrew the base cup. Remove the already fitted insert. Replace it with another. Simple and straightforward. You are now single coil ready. Fancy it massively air fed? Have it fully open. But block the non use side nonetheless. Don't want any airflow from the bottom? Well, block both channels off. And draw air through the body sleeve. Single coil friendly body sleeve is also provided. The whole system is geared towards airflow management. Four inserts, two body sleeves, three drip tips with varied bores and also use the spit back protector to further constrict your draw. Sweet isn't it? This is the RDA mode. Let's make it a tank. The Transformer RBA from GG. This is a fantastic option. The tank module. Did I mention earlier that this is a must buy? It uses the same platform to convert this RDA to a RTA in just a swipe. How cool is that? Inside you will find another bag of O-rings, a spare glass tank, borosilicate Pyrex, the extender ring, and the tank assembly. This is a chimney, tank body and a drip tip set. I forgot to repack the drip tip. My bad. This is a different top cap. Similar looking but different. It has breather holes for air escape after filling. Oh yes, this addy is refillable from the top, on the go. Grooves cut for assisting in rotation. Massive fill ports, exactly like the KFUN 4, 5 and K-Mini V3, holds 2ml. There is a secret though, but there is this extender module to increase it to 4.5ml capacity. It threads into this chimney stem and my daughter is back from school. The mouthpiece section is ditto. The same drip tips fit across the platforms. There is no use for this spit pack protection disc in the tank mode. You know the reason why already. That is exclusively for the dripper top cap. However, you use the same deck plus base assembly with the tank system as well. These three o-rings help it remain airtight inside. Oh yes, forgot to mention earlier, the post's base sits securely inside the deck ring due to this o-ring. There is a matching groove cut inside the ring to marry it up. Nice solid Pyrex glass tank. And there is a spare included as well. Clean cut, smooth edges, nicely done. By the way, this logo is cut onto the chimney, not on the glass pieces.
Here it is pitted against the earlier GG Talimahos armed eagle, which I have reviewed already. And here is the K15 for size comparison. The K14, K Mini V3, the earlier popular K1 Lite, Fakir's Ion Junior, Gus Phenomenon Momentous Unfollow version. <laughs> Quite a mouthful, eh? The Spica Pro, K1 Lite Stubby, and the GP Spheroid V4. And when you attach the extender, this is how it looks against the same set of RTS. So you see, as a RTA, the MADS is still shorter than many ADs in its class and I like that. But it bumps up the diameter a little. As a dripper, it is a 24mm ADI, but in tank mode, it becomes 25. Not much of a difference until you look at the ledge. Oh no! And I don't like that. Here is its wherewithals. extended mode with 4.5 ml capacity it is 45 mm tall let's see the weight with its full jing bang the full sized amadeus weighs 77.45 grams as empty without e-liquid without the extender in its TPD mode at 2 ml capacity it is roughly 63 grams. And in its dripper mode, it still is around 56 grams. Boom! You don't know. Big shock. The thing goes Not a lightweight addy by any means, and that's a good thing. Speaks positively about its build quality and choice of materials. And the length, by the way, is 28 mm with a 24mm diameter like I already said. Another cool feature of the Amadeus is that its chamber, which is dome shaped, can be customized. Leaving bare minimum threads atop for fixing the top can, we can easily reduce it by 2 to 3mm. If you press it too much down while attaching the deck base, you can always pull it up using a set of pliers. Beautiful. Let's clean it up and build it. Though the Amadeus comes neat and tidy, ultrasonic clean and shipped by Gigi, it's always wise to give it a fresh bath before you start using it. And before you start setting it up, always remember to loop the O-rings. There are four places with O-rings in the Amadeus. Three in the deck base, one on each stem of the airflow inserts, Two on the top cap mouthpiece and one on the 510 pause pin. I use a lip guard, Vaseline. You may use some e-liquid as well or any kind of edible lubricants. Now let's rebuild it. The post screws are flathead. And this screwdriver for them is in the package.
Nice massive post holes here. Can positively handle some fancy coils. I'll be using two 28 by 32 gauge Canthal Claptons. These are 2.5 mm ID coils. For each coil, you select an upper hole and a lower hole. Since coils have an upper leg and a lower one. Now holding it securely, tighten the appropriate screws. Ensure that you are maintaining a minimum of 1 mm gap here. Else, slightly pulling out the coil even after tightening the screws helps and is possible. A 2 mm gap would keep the coil right out of the base's air channels. But I prefer it little closer to the posts for two reasons. One, you are assured of no hot legs. And two, this gives a surround effect to the airflow. Then check the resistance and test it. 1 ohms, remember that. A slight strumming over the coil helps to make it glow evenly and faster. Time to snip off the excess wires and repeat the process for coil number 2. Note that the resistance of the setup now would drop to about half of what it was earlier with the one coil mounted. Now let's wick it. Appropriately, I'll be using GG Blend today. These are cotton bacon wicks. Take a guesstimated piece and slightly roll it. Make one end pointy and insert it into the coil. Move it back and forth so that the wick sits evenly between the coil. Then leave about 1.2 cm of wick tail on either sides. Pointed tweezers are not appropriate. Use flathead tweezers to tuck the wick tails down. Ensure that the juice feed ports are fully covered, but not jam packed. And repeat the process on the other side. By the way, for regular dripper mode, you may like to keep slightly longer wick tails. Around 1.5 cm is the ideal, in lieu of 1.2 as we did earlier. This is because squonking doesn't need to hold juice in the deck well. Moreover, bottom feeding needs extra space for juice to easily flow in from underneath. Now let's saturate it. Again, I'll be using GGE liquids as appropriate. These are 70% VG. 
and yummy. Give it test fire. Wow, superb. Let's assemble it up. Don't forget the spit back protector, especially when building super low ohms. Guards against hot bursts. Drip tip in. Locate the cutout. Match the flange. Adjust the airflow per your fancy. And man, the moment of truth. Oh hell yes, this thing rocks. I am with full open AFC and still the flavor is well appointed. And remember, I am still drawing air through the bottom as you have just seen now. And what is this with dripping through the spit back protector? Don't worry, the drops will still find its way down into the coil. Some magic going into it eh? But if you prefer, you can always detach the sleeve, drip and reattach it. However, I find it painful because these sleeves are actually a pitta, even after lubing the o-rings, which is a good thing as well as bad. Take it as you feel fit. Nonetheless, in the dripper mode, you can take one o-ring out. It still remains secure enough. Oh yes, some vape it indeed is. Now let's see how it fares in the tank mode. As you already know by now, the process is simple and easy. Just swap the dripper's body sleeve with the tank kit, which is a pre-arranged assembly of glass tank, chimney, a different top cap and a new drip tip. And it is an easy press fit. This system has an array of juice feed ports, which can be closed and opened, aka juice control. Close it for filling. Remove the top cap and pour your elixir into the tank. Put back the top cap. Open the juice flow control. and enjoy the bubbly sight. Of course the vape. Transformer RBA eh? As a tank, the draw gets tighter because now the top airflow control is no more there. At this configuration, it is very much a mouth to lung RTA. By the way, it is so tight that I have removed the airflow inserts completely. But the flavor shoots up. I find it is way more profound than what it was as a dripper. You get a full bodied vape, well saturated and tasty. The Amadeus is as wonderful as a tank as it is a dripper. Nothing is lacking in its VTF front. It is comparable to all the high-end ATs in its class, especially the KFN5, the similarities to which is uncanny. Now switching between regular dripping and squonking isn't that tough of a job either. It is just a matter of replacing the pause pin, which is done externally without disturbing the setup. 
and you can do this task anywhere anytime no special preparation is needed Overall, I find the Amadeus a very versatile attic. There is a whole lot you can do with this configuration. One platform, many possibilities. There are five things which definitely sets it apart. Number one, versatility. Yes, I cannot repeat it enough. This is the trump card. How many more ideas do you know which transform between a dripper and a tank so swiftly? And by God, you can squonk and tank at the same time as well. Attach it as a tank, not a dripper, over a squonking mod. One type of juice in tank and another in the squonking bottle. Best of both worlds. Same setup, two different tastes. Possibilities? If you are not too finicky about washing and replacing your wicks between flavors, ah, this is a godsend. But even if you do, you can always find matching flavors, can't you? Besides, how about having the same flavor top and bottom, but one with nick and the other without. Or one with low MG while the other at a higher level. Take one shot based on your mood or the time of the day. Possibilities. Number 2. Complete Package for the money, you are receiving 4 airflow inserts, 2 drip tips, 2 body sleeves, a spare glass tank and a spare top cap as well, if you also grab the tank kit that is. Not to forget the spare spaggy and the pleasingly written user manual. The modder has got you covered for every type of vape already and without any extra charges. By the way, for a few dollars more, don't overlook to grab the tank kit as well. You'll thank me later. Number 3. Novice Friendly There is nothing complicated about this Addy at all. No unnecessary overbearing parts. No tools needed to dismantle or use it unless you want to switch the pause pin. And that's a straightforward affair anyway. Easy access to the deck while the tank is full. No worries of juice spill when the tank is removed. Easy to coil and wick. You just saw me rebuilding it. How difficult was that? Easy top fill juice control and a well explained user manual in the package. Everything about the Amadeus is noob friendly. If a new vapor decides to go the RBA route, this is the way to go. Number 4. Perfect VTF With so many possibilities of airflow management in this thing, you can always find your favorite vapor output from this Amadeus. It can blow clouds as well as go stealth and of course anything in between. With the dome shaped chamber top which is also variable and the way the air channels are designed I find the Amadeus throws a solid punch into the throat. Yes, the throat hit is more profound with the Amadeus than its competition. My A-liquids feel stronger here and flavor I have already mentioned. It is a nice warm and tasty vape, pretty refreshing. And I'll be honest here, this tastes better than Gigi's earlier version, the Tyler Mahos Armed Eagle. I have reviewed it, it's a fantastic RTA, but this one is better. Number 5. Great Workmanship Gigi has always been known for their fine craftsmanship. This is no different. The Amadeus is constructed well. Good choice of materials, 
neat manufacturing, fine details. This is one heck of a purebred addy. It looks good, feels nice and oozes quality from the get-go. I'm amazed once again by Gigi's quality for sure. Now are there any things to crave about? Well in the performance front there are none, no issues whatsoever. However two things which I hinted earlier can be downer for some, they sure are mine. Number one, the ledge. I hate that in my stuff. I like things to be streamlined. Though the breakpoint is marginal, just a mm, it still dings like some sore thumb every time I look at it. Maybe just my thing. It could be fine for you. I don't know. Number two, super tight fit body sleeve. Hell yes, this thing is one pain in the wrong place to put together. Sure, the base slots and the body flanges are good design touch, but marrying them up is another matter altogether. Even when well lubed, I have always struggled to put the sleeve back onto the atty. Removing one o-ring helps, but not so much. <laughs> like I said, it could be a good thing and a bad. Good because there is no freaking way this addy is going to accidentally dislodge on you. However, the bad is overwhelming. But remember, this is only in the dripper mode. The tank mode has no such issues. In and out is soft with the right amount of restriction here. Overall, the Amadeus is one super fine addy. I especially like its ease of rebuilding and the quality of vape that it throws out. Yes, yes, yes. At 119 euros, this is not cheap. But considering what you get in the package and there are other addies which are more expensive, I think it is a sweet balance of price and quality. Well placed in the high end segment. And if you like a K5 vape, but easier to manage, this is the thing. As I said, I strongly recommend you to get the tank kit as well for two reasons. One, this is a great RTA and two, this is a transformer system. So getting it without the tank is lame, isn't it? And finally, thank you Gigi for keeping Falco's memory alive. Sad that he was taken away so soon. I know it's a long video, sorry about that. But the Amadeus is so enthralling that it needed all the time I could give. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day folks. Bye for now. And as always, remember, vaping is a healthier alternative. And we have the right to make that choice.